Working dogs are a vital part of any shoot day. There is something special about seeing a dog work well, controlled, directed, but also having the drive to find that bird in heavy cover or in water. But what does it take to get to this point? I thought that was appalling and unforgivable. I, I can see no reason to berate a dog like that at all. We talk to both sides of this argument. We meet the subject of that video, the man behind the camera, a gun dog trainer who's had 240,000 signatures on an online petition against his methods, but he stands by them. I believe that we should be honest and open with people. As professionals, we have a duty of care to these animals and we have a duty of care to the people we train that we have to say, this is acceptable as discipline and this is not acceptable. As for swinging dogs round by the ears and beating them, Yes, it looks like the dog's being picked by the ears, but it's actually being picked by the scruff. And I can explain why, and it's really an important issue, because so many people are using electric collars. And if a dog's had a pain on the side of its neck, and you go to grab the scruff, it'll turn and bite you. I'm not a fan of electric collars, I've never used electric collars myself, and I've watched other people use them, and I've seen dogs messed up with them. Christopher Upton has been a dog trainer for more than 30 years. He has trained hundreds of dogs in that time. However, his methods for training are controversial. He once posted a video of himself disciplining a dog called Storm. Mud sticks. At the end of the day, that's, you know, you, you make accusations against somebody, they may be totally innocent, but it, other people will believe it and then get on the bandwagon. And I've had other people then sharing it, saying this bloke beats dog. They've never met me at a trial running a dog because I haven't run a dog and they're in Surrey. But they train pets and they don't just train gun dogs, they train pets. I, I'm a gun dog specialist, but I could train pets in my sleep. Christopher has a YouTube channel where he's uploaded hundreds of videos showing how he trains his many dogs. This film from his channel shows a spaniel sitting obediently as birds fall dead around it. And then Christopher sends it in after one bird that has landed in water. One drive alone, I probably pick 40 birds if you watch the whole video. And the idea is the birds that are dropping around the dog, he's not allowed to pick unless I ask him to. He's supposed to just sit there, but I shouldn't be telling him to not move. He should just sit there. He should only go for the birds I ask him to. The idea is if you want that control, you're going to have to have your discipline in your training. If not, you've got to keep your dog on the lead until the end of the drive and then just let it run riot and pick anything it can find. That's a different sort of training altogether. And there's plenty of people on shoots who haven't got any control. I don't knock them people. It's down to each person's preference. But I come from the competition world where the standard has to be high. And I've realized over the years that you don't need to regimentally train a dog, but I can show you, and my videos show you, that how to have both sides of the story, a well-controlled dog using a little bit of discipline, but 95% fun-based training. When disciplining his gun dogs, Christopher uses methods that others do not agree with. He believes that to get a dog that's under pressure in the field to obey you, you need to be able to discipline it. Gilly Nichols has been a gun dog trainer for as long as Christopher. She is chairman of the South Eastern Gun Dog Society and a Kennel Club A panel retriever judge. She uses completely different methods to those used by Mr Upton. Gilly likes to train using only hand and voice. I'm a trainer who believes in trying to make everything as clear as possible for a dog. So anything that that dog does, it's either right or it's wrong, it's black or it's white. I'm not a clicker trainer, I don't reward with treats. For me, everything is done with hand and voice. So I talk to the dogs and I stroke them and I fuss them because that's why I have dogs, I like them. If I need to correct the dog because it makes a mistake, it goes wrong, then that will be primarily by voice, uh, but possibly by hand as well. And hands would be very much on the scruff of the dog's neck. It doesn't need to be overly physical. Frankly, tone of voice is quite enough for the dog to know that I'm cross with it. We showed Gilly clips of Christopher Upton's trading methods. I don't know the man, I haven't seen him training his dogs. There were certainly parts of those videos that would concern me. In one, one instance, there's a young spaniel that he wants to sit and stay, and he moves away from it. And actually, a lot of dogs, their natural inclination is to follow the owner. And to me, he was very heavy-handed. His reaction was intense. Uh, the way he picked the dog up and was really cross with it and took it back. It could be that he'd done it 100 times before nicely, and that was just the 101st time, but I don't know, I suspect not. Um, he then did the right thing when the dog was sitting there. 
he went back to it and, and praised it. But by that stage, the dog was clearly fairly unhappy about what had happened. Her head was on the ground. I'm not sure she was really aware that she had done something right. In a second clip you showed me, he was chastising a dog by, uh, it, he appeared to be pressing, holding its mouth open and pressing its lips against its canine teeth with all his other dogs milling around and I, I thought that was appalling, I mean unforgivable. I, I can see no reason to berate a dog like that at all. The dog that he was punishing, and I am going to say punishing rather than correcting because that's what it seemed to me that it was, was distressed. Its body language would have given that off. The scent it would have been making would have given that off because it would have been having huge adrenaline spikes. And it was making a noise that we could hear on the video. And that noise was clearly giving out a signal saying, something bad is happening here. It's wrong, it's, it's not understanding how dogs work. If you were in a new job um, and you weren't quite sure what to do, would you like your boss to explain to you what he wanted? Or would you like him to pick you up by your hair and throw you across the office? Um, and if you think the latter's the way that would work, maybe don't get a dog. I used correction. I used the flat of my hand on the base of the backside right at the bottom of the tail. Um, I pick a dog up by the scruff, I place it back on the spot, I use discipline. But discipline is completely different to cruelty. I mean, we're arguing about an ideology here that you've got a, a set of people who believe everything should be positive and only treat training and clicker training, you can't go down that road for a gun dog that's going to be put under extreme pressure. The other issue is the way that the internet has turned on Christopher. The problem started when he set up a closed Facebook group hosting his videos, but they were leaked by members of the group. His critics re-edited these videos and re-uploaded them, showing only the dog correction and detailing what they thought were wrong. He is accused of slapping and swinging Storm by the ears, and as a result, Christopher has been involved in legal proceedings. He had his guns taken away, requiring him to go to court to win them back. He has been referred to the RSPCA, and there was an online petition which 240,000 people signed, asking the government to prosecute him for mistreating animals. It's not me so much, it's my wife, it's my family. It's the stress it causes them. You know, they're not as strong as me. I'm quite a strong guy. I can take these people on and I ignore the hate that comes through on a regular basis. You're allowed to disagree with my methods of training, but what I don't like is the fact that they take my videos, edit them, and only show the discipline side and not show the whole story. My videos are there for people to make judgment themselves by looking at them and saying, okay, we might not like that, but I like that. It's a free country. If you don't like them, don't watch them. There is no consensus on training techniques. The Kennel Club's code of practice for accredited instructors says there is to be no aversive training, so does not support Christopher's position. We asked Basque if they recommend corrective training for gun dogs. Basque's head of game and deer management, Glyn Evans, has no view on it, adding that training sessions should be enjoyable for both you and your dog. Christopher Upton has been in the social media spotlight over this issue for years culminating in Christopher ringing one of his abusers and challenging them. He uses offensive language. You can hear what he says by clicking on the link in the screen. I got the email at four o'clock in the morning. I sat there, I, I answer about 30 or 40 emails. Then this one comes through saying, have you seen this? This is gonna be dead damage. And it says you be he beats and kicks dogs for a living, right? I then was so angry, I phoned up. In the background, a guy starts swearing at me. Then I upped my ante and I swore at her. Do you smack a dog or don't you? Do you start a campaign? The claim and counterclaim between Christopher and his abusers is not over yet. There are plenty of methods and techniques employed by owners and professional gun dog trainers. They all want results on the field. Away. How they achieve those results appears to be very different. For a more detailed report into this case, please click on the link on the screen or visit bit.ly forward slash Christopher Upton. But everything I say, I stand by. Use this as evidence.